the all important offensive line we've been discussing over and over and over from all different angles. Well, this is a huge one. Jonah Monheim has been moved to center. He will be the center uh, for 2024. So, Matt, do you want to start us out in regards to how significant you believe that move is? Well, you know, the people who follow USC football very closely, especially those at 247 Sports, they've said, like, it's been pointing this way the whole time. So, like, for USC insiders, this does not rate as any sort of surprise at all. But I think, you know, what what the real significance of this, I think there, there are two main top line reactions for me. One is you want your best offensive lineman to either be the left tackle or the center. So, and they they. The, the staff feels that Jonah Monheim is, is best suited to be center. So like, that's good. Like he, he was USC's best offensive lineman last season. So having him captaining the ship at center, that makes me feel good. That makes me feel confident. Now, the part that makes me feel less confident, you know, now how does Josh Henson deal with the, the shuffling, the transitions, putting the right pieces in place? along that offensive line. And, and again, he did a great job in 2022 with Bobby Haskins filling in the transfer from Virginia that really plugged a lot of holes, was able to hold the fort when Justin Dietrich briefly got injured, when Andrew Voorhees got injured briefly uh, in that 2022 season. Henson was able to mix and match two years ago, but the mixing and matching suffered last year. Gino Quinones, you know, that particular injury really hurt USC you know, I would say more than it probably should have. And that's not to dismiss or downgrade the quality of Gino Quinones, but like you, you, we didn't go into 2023 thinking Gino Quinones is going to be the linchpin, you know, that the anchor of this offensive line. And yet when he went out, like the, the quality of that offensive line definitely dipped. So it, this move, Puts a spotlight on left tackle, where one would think Elijah Page is probably going to be the guy. But really, Josh Henson has to figure out the right combinations. Who's going to be right tackle? That becomes even more of a point of focus as well with, with Monheim at center. So it opens up a lot of possibilities. Tim. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, a lot there. I think what allowed this definitely to happen was the emergence of Elijah Page. I was, I was talking about that bumper crop of freshmen that they're bringing along, you know, and this is bringing along slowly. And uh, we saw it come together in that, in, in that holiday bowl. Um, you know, these, these guys, uh, Michael Van Willows is, is, is hurt, but you know, you were thinking who was going to play center Zanna Mellon, you know, even you, you don't really want a, like a red shirt freshman or freshman center, you know, or hurt or not hurt. I mean, I'm sure eventually Michael Van Willows will, will be pushing, Zandamella, those, those those are our centers of the future, I think. Um, but this is the best situation, like you said, Matt. Putting him inside, you know, our tackles are emerging. Those young guys I've been talking about, they are emerging. It shows the confidence that uh, that Riley and Henson have in, in those young tackles, the fact that they're going to move him inside. The, this move is going to be eventual because he's his, he's projected to be an interior offensive lineman in the NFL. And I think that's one of the reasons why he came back Maybe you get some film, uh, you know, show show scouts. Hey, not only can I play in, outside, but I'm also inside. You know, where my measurables probably stack up a little bit better. And um, I I think that this is going to be a great opportunity for him as well as for USC. That probably means you're going to see, uh, you know, Pregnion got a lot of tr uh, crap last year. The guy, you know, he came in. He was a, he's a young lineman. Kind of got a lot of these guys just got thrust in there. And the reason why that happened was is they're expecting Ethan White, who was a guard from Florida, big SEC guard. Did not clear medical, uh, the medical, did, never really made it to the team. And then whatever happened with, you know, Kingston and Tarquin on the other side, on the right side, it just didn't work out, right? So that we didn't know that that white, the loss of white in preseason, and then Quinones going down early in the season, just how much that really caused havoc on the offensive line. And the we know that's where your office is. It starts up front. And when that offensive line caved, you know, people <laughs> craziness. We have people called our show at time, Mark, talk about, oh, yeah, Caleb Williams wasn't this and wasn't that. I'm just like shaking my head. What are you people talking about? You know, did you not see he was running for his life in that in that Notre Dame game? Didn't you see that, you know, he had no time to throw? He he didn't go from being a Heisman Trophy winner to a bum. You know what I mean? Something happened. And what happened was they just couldn't get that offensive line to gel. Two things this says to me, Mark and Matt, is one, 
Uh, I think that there's the line calls. You know, you're talking about a veteran line. He's make it. He's he's he knows this line. He knows the offense. He'll be inside. He was he was rated by PFF one of the best offensive tackles in the country. Now you move him inside. Um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna give Miller Moss a lot of um, a lot a lot of uh, rest restful sleep knowing that he has him up in the middle. You know, basically the the quarterback of the offensive line. I think that's a really I that's a really good point there, Tim. You know, just let's just like it's not as though Caleb Williams was ever, ever, ever in a million years going to come back to USC for 2024. But if we had just imagined a hypothetical situation in which Caleb Williams was going to be USC's quarterback, you wonder if this move would be made. You you wonder if uh USC would have felt the need to put Monheim at center. But I think you you zeroed in on it giving stability and a veteran presence for Miller Moss in that center quarterback relationship, you know, basically the equivalent of pitcher catcher in baseball, Give, putting the veteran with Miller Moss at the beginning of this season. That's really important. That, that I think that is a significant factor in all of this. So that's a great point by you, Tim. Other thing that I'd mentioned doing this now before the spring, you offer a like, this like it's not an accident that Lincoln Riley mentioned this, but right before spring practice starts, because that's a message to everyone else on that offensive line. OK, come on, I'm the center. Like when we're just putting it out there, being very public and direct about it, like we're not going to play coy. You know, we're not going to try and uh, be sneaky or or wait. No, we're going to put this out here. So message sent, guys, we need to need to establish some firm tackles firm guards, especially on the right side. You know, if Elijah Page can lock down left tackle, really the focus is probably going to shift mostly to the right side of the offensive line with Mason Murphy, Tobias Raymond, others in play. But it's sending a message right before the spring, hopefully to motivate those guys competing for spots on the right side of that offensive line. And so you're hoping that you'll see uh, a really responsive, robust uh, spring from those uh, c competitors on the right side. And if you don't get the results that you're looking for, then this is the next domino, the next piece of the puzzle. If you don't get the intended results your or progression, evolution that you are hoping for at USC uh, on the right side of the offensive line in the spring, that might move the needle toward getting an offensive tackle rather than a defensive tackle in the spring portal window, which begins on April 16th. So a lot of dominoes all lined up. And I, it's I, like, there's, it's no accident that this, this seed was planted. This message was sent right before spring practice. And this is a great point by Walter. Riley walked into an empty cupboard. He, he did. The, the guys, the front, the front line guys were, were great. And, and, you know, bring a, uh, bring in, um, you just said his name, uh, the left tackle um, in 22, Matt. 22 left tackle, Matt. You said his name. What's the name again? No? Oh, tw 22. Well, Haskins, Haskins, Haskins Bobby. played some left tackle. Yeah, but yeah, they moved well, him around. Yeah. Moved well, both tackle, but um, that showed you the issue that they had on, uh, you know, with the depth. But last year, it showed you again. But with the bad news comes the good news. Uh, we're talking about the right side. You could have a Lonnie Noah moving over there. This is a very, he was a true freshman, but he was a massive true freshman. So you could have Pregnon and and uh, Alani Noah with Monheim in the middle. That's a lot of beef up the middle uh, for the. I'm sure I can't imagine that 22 line compared to this one. Just the actual size differences can be pretty pretty massive. Um, and I, I I we have our good uh, buddy here, Gary from Data Point. No, Gary, I think that moving him to center shows the strength of this line. If he they didn't because he he's a very good tackle. The fact they had the the confidence to move him inside. Shows you the confidence they have of those guys, you know, the Tobias Raymonds on the outside. Um, it's, it's, it shows you that they're, they're, they feel like Elijah Page and, and Raymond and, and uh, those guys will be able to lock down those tackle positions. They are kind of playing him out of position last year. This is an interesting point. So G Gary from Dana Point uh, with the comment here and obviously one of our best callers on uh, our Friday show with Tim. I, I would make this point. I, I fund... I fundamentally agree with Tim that it points to like they're trusting these younger guys at the tackle spots, but 
I think Gary from Data Point has something to say here because it did it does show that USC had a, a deficit or a gap at center. Like there wasn't a true center. And, and the fact that Monheim hasn't primarily been playing center and now you're putting him at center, like that is a less than ideal situation. But I do think that in, in terms of like giving Miller Moss the best center quarterback relationship in terms of giving Miller Moss the most stability, the best possible chance of succeeding, Monheim at center, like that is an enhancement. So I, in many ways, this, this, this cuts in both directions. I think Gary uh, from Dana Point has uh, that like there's there's a definite core element of truth. But I but I would ultimately say that Tim's point about this being a, a show of strength, like they're trusting the young guys at the tackle spots. Um, I, I finally agree with Tim there. Obviously, this this makes spring practice that much more important for those tackles to prove <laughs> that that they uh, do belong, that they're ready to take on this this big responsibility uh, at those tackle spots. And, and one more thing I forgot about. So we talked about White, who never made it in the door. We talked about Quinones that went down. We also forget that that Cortland Ford um, portaled out to was it Tennessee? I can't remember. Um, Kentucky, Kentucky, and so. Th those three things that bam, 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 that's what really destabilized that, that, that offensive line and really uh, left a lot of points on the board uh, that USC probably would have scored with all three of them being healthy and on that line. Guys, what about this component to it? How would you rate USC's offensive line last year in just pass protection alone on a scale of one to 10? Six. Yeah, it's about fair. Six. Okay. How much? Like I certainly wouldn't. I certainly wouldn't put it anywhere near eight point five or nine. Like not not particularly close to being you know top tier. So this is a rough estimate that maybe Caleb Williams makes up for two points of deficiency on a scale of one to ten. So how much better do they have to be if they were somewhat mediocre, insufficient to make up for the Caleb Williams factor? to protect a Miller Moss instead of a Caleb Williams. The, the, the game that Caleb and Miller appeared to play, and I'm going to this is just looking off of last year. They're two different quarterbacks. And um, it, it looks like Miller is more the kind of guy to get that, you know, get the ball out in rhythm on schedule, you know, in the pocket wants and, and we'll th throw it away. If, you know, if need be uh, that also, well, they both they both I mean, you think they both help the offensive line, right? The way Miller plays the, the game, and the way uh, Caleb's able to have that sixth sense, that pocket presence, and just ability to take off and break. I mean, I don't think it, I can't remember last time I saw a stronger quarterback than Caleb Williams. Just the way he would just roll tacklers off him. They're just I would say different. I don't know really how to say that. Um, I don't think I think this offensive line is going to be much better than the previous iteration we saw last year. Uh, uh, how much and, and what I got a lot of crap last week for pumping what I think Miller Moss is going to be and slow down, pump the brakes, etc. I, I no one, I'm not saying he's going to be the, you know, the Heisman Trophy winner, but I have a lot of confidence in this guy. I mean, he he walked in that bowl game and it wasn't a fluke, he made a number of great throws, he was able to go through his progressions. The guy's really bright, he's a good leader. Um, I don't think he has to be spectacular. And you know, I think that we forget one thing, Trojan fans. You know who the play caller is, right? You, you know, you know the weapons he has around. It's not just Miller Moss against the world out there. You know, he's got some pretty damn good receivers and running backs. And one more thing on that that we're gonna be, I think, Matt, tomorrow, the Jacavius Marks um article I made. One thing about him, and it was just actually Gabe over at Trojan Blaze what pointed this out to me. His PFF rate for for pass blocking was quite high. It was like it was like you know seventy eight or eighty for, uh, grade for pass blocking, which seventy is average. So he's above average as a pass blocker. That's just one more layer, right? You have in the protection scheme for for Miller Moss back there. If you got a back that can block very well, it does bring up the point that precisely because Miller Moss does get the ball out more quickly, that does make the decision to entrust the tackle spots and, and Roy Benuelos just comes in and makes that same point. 
like the, the Millers, Miller Moss is going to help the linemen, you know, feel that like they don't have to carry as much of the workload. They don't have to hold their blocks yeah. as long uh, within this setup. So like it's all of a piece. It's all tied together. And that but that now leads to the point where, you know, like LSU, also Michigan, early season opponents on on USC's 2024 schedule. Like they're going to be aware of this, right? Like, you know, Miller Moss gets the ball out quickly. So you know that they're going to be jumping routes, or at least they're going to be, you know, planting that seed about jumping routes uh, early in the game. You know, the, Miller Moss is going to get the ball out quickly. And, and Miller Moss and Lincoln Riley, they will need to have a plan for that, like quick slant. Double quick move. Hit. No, they make get birdie sure, both times. Make that. sure defenses aren't just jumping on that. Make sure you have like a double move or some kind of variation to be ready to counter what defenses are likely to do, knowing all of this. So it's like sets up some early drama for that LSU game. Makai Lemon, Makai Lemon, I, 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 I don't want to over pump people. You guys just remember that name. Everyone's looking at Deuce Robinson. Everyone's looking at uh, Jacoby Lane. They, they keep they keep drooling and, and for good reason uh, to be drooling. But you guys get ready because uh, you saw a little bit of it in that in the Holly Bowl. But Mikai Lemon, in his own right, is a really special receiver, and um, they're not they're not going to be able. I mean, if they start jumping routes, Matt, they're going to get they will get burnt. It's you know that's how you fight it. You just go over the top of them. If they want to jump routes, then let, let's see what, let's see what this um, the receiving core can do.